Hey guys, we're finally back to doing one of those viewer question videos I keep saying I'm going to do. And we're going to start off with sort of a how-to video. Got this message from Sons Plays, according to this about a month ago, so I've been sitting on this for a while. Starts off with compliments, compliments, there we go. Also, what effects do you put on your commentary as you sound so alive and in the viewer's face, which is great. I uh, hope you don't mind me messaging, blah, blah, blah. You can message me, it's fine. I'm not concerned about any of that. Anyway, I don't really put effects on my voice, but I do process it in a certain way. I don't know why I'm fiddling with Vegas right now. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to show you a little something. Because I, I sit here, I have a blue snowball, first of all, so that's important. It's, it's a condenser microphone. I sit with about a hand's width away from the microphone, which is uh, it's kind of important. A lot of people buy microphones and then sit way too far away from them. You want to sit up close to them and... You want to have a low volume set on the microphone so that it doesn't uh, peak. Because if you get whenever you're too loud and you get to the top of the waveform, that's when you let's see if I can do this shouting. There we go. That's a nice. If you ever hit the full screen, that's bad, really. So don't do that. But this is me doing basic commentary, and as you might notice, if I get a little quiet, then suddenly. It's just harder to hear, and you, it does sudden spikes when I get alarmed during boss fights and shit. That's when you, let's see if I can do this, shouting. There we go, that's a nice, if you ever hit the full screen, that's bad, really. So don't do that, but this is me doing basic commentary, and as you might notice, if I get a little quiet, then suddenly, it's just harder to hear. And you, it does sudden spikes when I get alarmed during boss fights and shit. So these, this, this is all problematic. My volume is all over the place. First of all, let's export this. I'll give it a dumb name because I don't care that much. Because it's just a, a demo. I, I always find it good to export this kind of stuff. The raw audio first, just in case anything goes wrong in the process. Which honestly doesn't really ever happen. But just I like to have original copies of things. But what I do in Audacity, which is a free downloadable audio recording and editing software. I did one basic thing, which is I just used the compressor. Now, the compressor can be a blessing and a curse. You're seeing here, it's now leveled my audio so that even when I'm quiet, it's much louder. And it also will help, it'll, 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 it'll basically help the, make the audio louder without making the parts that are already loud, louder. The problem is, especially since my fan is rattling on my computer right now, you can get this, this this shitty background noise, which is not ideal. Uh, you Oftentimes you should use the noise remover. I'm really jumpy about the noise remover. It, it adds way extra time, to a lot of extra time to the processing, while also uh, you have to sit there and check your audio afterwards, because if you do use the noise remover, which I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do here, which I use sometimes, but not always. You, you select an area of noise, go to noise removal, you say get noise profile, Select the whole thing, and then use noise removal and say OK. And it will now remove the audio, so you'll mostly not hear noise anymore. So don't do that. But this is me doing basic. Nice. If you ever hit the full screen, that's bad, really. So you'll notice that that part was dead. Was now dead. There's some sounds over here, though. Is that noise? If I get nope, that's me breathing. OK. So not bad this time. Sometimes you get oscillating noise where it cuts in and out over and over again because it's only been partially removed. So you really have to be careful with this tool in particular. But so now we're compressed and noise removed. So it sounds like this now. That's when you, let's see if I can do this, shouting. There we go. That's a nice, if you ever hit the full screen, that's bad, really. So don't do that. But this is me doing basic commentary. And as you might notice, if I get a little quiet, and suddenly, it's just harder to hear. And you, it does sudden spikes when I get alarmed during boss fights. So you'll notice that that all sounded level. I get a little quiet, and suddenly, it's just harder to hear. And you, it does sudden spikes when I get alarmed during boss fights. It can't, fi it can't fix my enunciation, though. I'm still bad at speaking. But yeah, so don't do that. But this is me, a little quiet, and suddenly, it's just harder to hear. And you, it does sudden spikes when I get alarmed during boss fights. So this is, this is more of a, this is what you might call dynamic range when you have highs and lows and everything. It's good for music. It's good for when you have aud one audio source 
and nothing else. I always forget how to do redos. <laughs> it's control Y apparently. Uh, redo noise removal. There we go. So we'll go ahead and export this. I usually give it the same name, but with like comp at the end to represent that that's the compressed version of the same track. I have a complicated naming scheme where I name everything like this is the game I recorded, and this is what day it was recorded on, and this is the video, or this is the audio, and then it'll be like 01, 02, 03, because if I do multiple recordings in one day, which is usually the case. Anyway, we now have audio, so that's good. I can more or less ex close Audacity at this point. It's not going to be super important. Hello, Vegas. What I can do with this audio now is I can drag it over into Vegas, or whatever you're audio editing software is, I mean video video editing software. We're probably going to have some minor spoilers for an episode of Batman that isn't out yet, unless I put this out then. We'll see how that goes. So let's, let's compare really quick. First of all, I currently have Batman set to like negative 10, so we're going to boost the audio. Just to compare. Alright, so this is Batman and this is uh wait we should do the original audio so this is this is the original batman audio with my commentary tracks we just recorded that's when you do this shouting can it be now there we go terry as you might notice if i get a little quiet so, so yeah that's badly balanced audio right there and you can fix that a bit you can go in i already have Edited audio. Uh, we'll get to that later. But here's what it looks Don't like. Do that. But this is me doing basic commentary. As you might notice, if I get a little quiet, then suddenly, as you can tell, my compressed stuff's already easier to hear. But the little problem is every time there's a spike, it gets too loud. So like all the background noise is quiet enough that my compressed audio is louder than it. But all the spikes, every time a, a big noise happens, it suddenly gets too loud, and that's kind of a problem. So this is my compressed audio track. We'll go ahead and try to compare these really quick. It might be a little hard because it's a little well. Uh, I can just put them on parallel tracks, I guess. This is a little uh, this is a little awkward on a weird the setup that I have right now. What have I done? I've created too many anchor points and awkward things. People are gonna be so mad at me. I'm wasting their time. Oh no! All right, let's go ahead and make copies of this just to bring it down here to compare there we go mute that so that's the wrong channel <laughs> editing with an audience making you feel like a crazy person so let's compare how I, what I did here what I did is I actually off screen already exported that Batman audio what I do is I take I take the Batman audio I put it on a track that has no special changes made to it. I even have it called raw audio. It has a zero decibel change, it has no special effects on it. I export that. Depending on how you record in the first place, you might even be able to just extract the audio directly from it. I run the audio also through Audacity, and I compress it the same way I do my own commentary. I don't do, no don't do noise removal on a video game. That that's not what that's for. But uh, let's compare here. Now watch these watch these waveforms, not waveforms, but watch the levels in the middle of the screen. You can, tell, you can tell it kind of spikes all over the place, and so all those spikes where it jumps up, those are the problems. It actually is supposed to sound more like this, really. You heard me. That's a great many individuals. Uh, it's like the comment. No, Alfred. Uh, there's in-game dialogue that's quieter. Combat's really loud, but then. Like, all the stuff between combat's quiet if you look at the waveforms. I make it so that it's all equal. Okay, that video is a bad example because it's out of sync, but anyway. None of you are capable of organizing and leading such an assault. You can tell from the waveform and from the levels on the screen that when I'm playing it that this is all kind of one equal level of volume, whereas the original Batman audio is kind of all over the place and harder to deal with. I compress the game audio specifically because it's good for 
balancing against my own audio. So the final result that we have here is actually that I have compressed commentary and compressed Batman audio. And as a result, let's see, let's try to get this in sync so I can show you guys, but anyway, as a general rule, I normalize the audio just so that it, it has the same bass volume. But now it leads to a situation where I can be like, all right, this part needs to be quieter, but this part needs to be louder. So I just do that. Oh, seriously? He heard you boys coming from a mile away. So there's clear volume. Look at that. Because I don't know. I think I just did the opposite of what I want to do. I want to winch it the other way, right? You got me. Okay, okay, I give up. <laughs> so you can tell from the commentary, the levels on the screen, it's hanging out around like the three to six decibel range instead of being all over the place, which means that I have two audio tracks that are roughly level. This is this thing you're seeing right here is called an envelope. Let's go ahead and just I don't have not in the middle of anything, am I? No. Nope. We can just go ahead and remove that to show you guys. You can do insert and remove envelopes in in, in uh, Vegas. If you're using Premiere or something, you're out of luck. You're gonna have to figure out how it work how to do this stuff on that on your own, because I don't know how to use that program. But all you do is insert a volume envelope and you have this line and you can double click anywhere to create anchor points and once you have anchor points you can just drag it around to change the volume of that part like this I, get, I can't get behind it oh god there's one right behind the other one quiet game audio is there another one good oh god there's so you can just do all that in real time pretty easily so let's go through now how I edit an episode because we it's up to you to, to experiment with basic balancing of like, what sounds good? But you, if you're watching my videos, you know as a general rule that I like to have the game, con like conversations of the game taking place at roughly the same volume level as my own commentary. So that's what we do here. So this is a separate track that I had to process separately. So we're, we're going to go ahead and group these together. Because that joins the, tr the new tr audio track with the video. This is the compressed audio that I did off screen. We'll get rid of the original audio. We don't need that anymore. I mean, it's not gone forever. I could always just re-import the file from scratch, and that would not be a big deal. So let's go into synchronization real quick. I usually use the PlayStation main menu. There's a lot of places you can do this. It's good to have a... a if you're playing on consoles, it's nice because you can have a standardized place you always sync, which in this case, which is outside of the game, on the dashboard. So what I do is I give myself an audio cue. Uh, uh, oh, uh. Just a basic sound that I make. So I go for the spot in the video that is uh, the when the screen first starts moving, and I tr sort of try to center it on the sound of me syncing the audio. I group all these together, so now they're all moving together. So that now they're in sync for the rest of the time I'm editing this video. Uh uh oh uh 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 oh uh. It's all in sync, so we're good. So I'm going to walk you through how I edit an episode, and this is going to have everything. It's going to have conversations. It's going to spoil the shit out of an episode of Batman if this one hasn't aired yet. Uh, which one, which episode is this? Three episodes to go. Where's the last Batman I've uploaded? Fourteen. This is probably this is probably Batman seventeen or something. So I don't know. <laughs> Watch at your own risk. Alfred. I'm heading to the movie go. studios. Prepare the analysis of the Arkham Knight stronghold. Heading to the there movie studios. So I said, here we go there. I don't actually intend that to be in the video. That was just me giving an audio cue to myself that the video was starting because it's one of those awkward episodes that kind of starts with, with NPC dialogue instead of my own dialogue. So I normally set the, uh, the game audio over here is at minus 10 decibels. My commentary is at minus 2. I keep everything at minus something because I find that the, it leads to audio peaking problems if I let it leave it at just zero in the final video. So we're going to cut the video here and get rid of all this garbage where I was like loading stuff and setting up. That's all gone. There we go. And so I'm going to start the video here and I'm going to create, I'm going to use the audio envelope to raise the volume right here of the game while, dr while also getting rid of the audio of my own commentary. Alfred, I'm heading to the movie studios. Very well, Sam. The lion's den awaits. 
got a bit of a commute ahead of us. So as you can see, the game audio dropped back down to its minus... Because there's a minus 10 on the, on the layer itself, but I set this line to minus 8. So at that point, it's technically at minus 18 decibels. Whereas when it's at a peak, this line actually takes it to plus 6, which takes it from minus 10 all the way up to being actually minus 4. So it's only 2 decibels quieter than my commentary when it's at max volume, which works out just fine. I, I hit control S uh, habitually, so if you ever see the screen flicker for a second like this, that's just me hitting S, control S all the time to save. So what we do more or less is we hunt for in-game dialogue to raise the volume of. It's a little awkward for me as someone who's trying to build up speed. I hope City Hall blowing us all to pieces again. I got a mortgage to pay off. Little fun stuff like that, just so you guys can hear things in the background. I could have super intense, amazingly detailed audio editing if I did this full time or something, but this is kind of the quick and dirty version of audio editing because I do this as a side thing while I also have a job. So here you can see from the waveform, there's a bunch of dialogue here. When you click on it, you can see the subtitles too, which helps. But you get you get used to the general pattern that dialogue has. I'm doing something here where I'm gonna st I'm gonna partially raise it at first, and then fully raise it after I finish talking, because it's an awkward moment where I'm talking and the game's talking. And usually I can make this kind of work. It seems so much incredibly first faster. As a general rule. People are relative, can actually be relatively okay at picking out multiple uh, uh, simultaneous voices separately so that you can actually hear which ones are which and everything. You just need to be careful to, about balancing it a little bit so they sound separate. This one's also just a very cut and dry conversation. This is me walking in, back into that layer. So I, I, I generally will just mute my audio for those parts and, because this time, these times where someone's talking for 20 seconds or five minutes sometimes or 15 minutes sometimes in Witcher's case, uh, I might like check my phone or take a drink of something and there's all sorts of background noises that can happen so it's a good idea just to mute my audio each time. Bad enough keeping Miss Gordon's abduction a secret, but this, it's wrong. We have to make sacrifices, Alfred. Consider those sacrifices wisely, sir. So this whole time I could be making all sorts of background noises, but you guys can't hear it because I muted my audio. In this in this case the track looks kind of clean though. There's one little f little flicker there. Let's see if I can hear it. Yep, I was probably drinking something. Gross mouth noises. Yeah, the constant reminder that there's a human behind the microphone and they're full of germs. All right, just gonna go ahead and walk you through this whole process. This part's relatively, relatively straightforward. Uh, the in-game audio, even after compression, is super quiet here. Most people have straight up evacuated at this point. So I actually won't even bother creating separate envelope tracks for each of them. I will selectively mute my own audio for all the extended dialogue, but I won't actually edit the in-game audio back and forth. I'll just create an envelope before and after the entire cut series of, of conversations and drag the whole thing up at once. I mean, not necessarily. Most people have straight up evacuated at this point. So as you can tell, even though I did not bring down the game audio, because it's already low in that part anyway, it doesn't matter. You, you, you get a slightly louder, more clear sound of that one device being operated. Most people have straight up and that's about it. It doesn't overpower my commentary, so I don't have to worry about it. Now the repetition sets in. Bear with me for a moment. This, Ironically enough, this is an unedited audio editing this it's a it's a video about video editing and it's unedited i didn't actually have to create that end envelope there part of it's because i just want you guys to get an idea of how long some of this might take when i'm editing an episode and then you s multiply that by the number of episodes I, I make and you get a good idea of how long it takes to edit some of this stuff some stuff takes way less time to edit if i'm editing a darkest dungeon or massive chalice, or a lot of these PC indie games that have very minimal dialogue, usually an announcer that kind of says the same thing over and over again. It's like twice an episode, I'll have one little thing that gets where the audio gets louder, but otherwise I'm just like, video start here and end here, the end. And I'm done editing that in a couple minutes, aside from the time it takes to compress audio. What they think? Yeah, Scarecrow's a real buzzkill, he should put something funny on or something. Wee. I'm an idiot. 
I'm extra uh, self-conscious of all the bullshit that I say in videos when I'm also in the process. Here yeah, I am doing the multi-tier edit again because there's sort of multiple things happening at the same time. You say bullshit all the time when you're recording Let's Plays, and I'm extra aware of how dumb a lot of it is when I'm forced to <laughs> kind of watch my own editing. I mean, watch my own commentary in the context of watching, knowing that someone else is watching me edit it in the first place. We're going to do a sort of a tiered now. That was a long intro into some pretty loud increasing of audio, so I wanted to make it a little more gradual in that case because it's all loud helicopter noise and stuff. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a ton of of spoilers in this episode. I've actually skipped over most of the dialogue that was spoilery, so I'd, if you haven't left already, I don't think it's actually going to matter that much. If you haven't seen this episode of Batman yet, you're just going to you're actually going to get some behind the scenes little treats here. Because you're going to see what I leave on the cutting room floor, which varies from game to game. Here's more di background dialogue, but I'm talking the whole time. Defeat them already. I'm bored. Towards his own guys. He doesn't care about you. Oh, yeah. Damn, Batman. So I know that where we balance, are. Though. I know exactly where we are. So, uh, I had a lot of trouble here. So here's a little trick I do. You'll notice that th this is not... This is loading screens and shit. And this is not really an extended conversation, so you might be wondering, like, why is there no dialogue during any of this? This is when you're supposed to be talking in a Let's Play, right? A common tactic I use to sort of do rapid speed editing is I will actually start talking whenever it's time to do use the video. And whenever it's t whenever I know I'm not using the footage, I will actually stop talking. This leads th this makes th these really obvious gaps in my commentary, as you can see which are really important anchor points for me because that helps me understand what's going on when I'm editing it later because of the fast that I need to go faster. I don't have t this is a like an hour and 10 minute recording for one episode. I don't have time to sit there and uh watch the entire thing from front to back when while also working a job and everything. So that doesn't really work for me. So this is a case where I died in one spot a lot, like all the time. Uh in Dark Souls' case, each death can be interesting in its own right, so I'll often show each death, even if it devolves into being a, a brief montage of a bunch of kill shots or something. But in Batman, I think it's kind of boring to show people deaths over and over again. Uh, that's also part of the reason why I don't want to stream it necessarily. I'm playing in hard mode, and I t turns out sometimes it's actually hard. Uh, in Batman, I find the deaths uninteresting to watch as a montage because every fight especially in when it's melee fights, is just you versus a whole bunch of dudes, and they're all attacking you, and you're counterattacking, and it's just kind of a brief... It's got like a fierce uh, trading of blows over and over again. And then, after X amount of times getting hit, finally, it's like death by a thousand cuts. One spare punch gets in and, and finally delivers the killing blow and knocks you out, and you have to reload the entire save and start the whole thing over, and that's... That's a little frustrating. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut all the way to my final attempt. And I'm just going to show that instead of going through and, and showing them all over and over again. If I can just find where that final attempt was. Oh, I've gone past it now. Okay. Yep, here's the fight. And there's a nice little signifier here that makes this fight stand out. Because there's a little bit of a surprise that happens every time I come in. Hey, Joker. Being a dick. So that's the beginning of my final attempt, and here's like 20 minutes of me just failing over and over again. This is probably the most trouble I've had in any single location in the entire game so far. But that's cool, because we can more or less fix that and make me look like a better video game player than I really am. And you can't accuse me of trying to hide it, because I'm literally showing you how I do it. Onto this island. Yes, the only thing. Let's see how that goes for you. Yes, I'm sure he's very loyal to his dumb g So this is when I'm on my way to the building. I'm going to go ahead and just add a transition here. There goes 23 minutes of footage. Always a good feeling when you know that you just, just recorded all that time and none of it's going to be used in the video. But that's fine. Knowing what to cut out is part of the process. So I'm just going to transition directly from there to the beginning of my, my attempt. I was invisible. Let's sneak up on some fools. 
Obviously, I don't really try to hide the jump cut. You can extrapolate as you want. Whenever you see any jump cut, maybe I cut out attempts. Maybe I got a phone call and got interrupted. These are all things that can happen. There's a lot of reasons why jump cuts happen, but in this case, it's because I chose to not put you through 20 minutes of failure. Bunch of fools. <laughs> the look on your face when you saw him. <laughs> The big bad Batman, scared of his own reflection. And then fighting happens, like so much fighting. We have samurai swords, like three of them. Oh Some god, there's another sam- wow, there's a lot of guys with swords. Camera, needs to pan out a little bit so I can see the guys coming from behind the camera. Distance here. In the face. Hey friend, you're kind of screwed now, you're all alone. This is where I get to have my fun. I suggest moving or reacting in some way. Well, so we succeeded there. And as you could probably hear, while I was fighting the dude, even though the game's turned down, you could hear all of the blows happening and even the music in the background. And that's all because of the compression. The compression just makes the audio work better when you're taking two different audio sources that are continually happening and trying to balance them in a way so you can hear both, where obviously you want to hear the commentary more because otherwise why have it exist if it's, if it's going to be overrun by the game audio. But when the game audio is compressed like this, even at its reduced volume, it's such a level volume for the most part that you can hear it clearly despite the fact that it's so low. So you can sit here and... I'm saying things and fighting things. You can hear the little sword swings and the impacts. I thought I was ready with that counter. More attacks. We just gotta be careful, come on. Uh. There's one little thing I wanna add punch to though. We had a big flurry of blows here. Let's make the game a lot of audio a bit louder here. Not max it out, cause then it'll override me completely, but let's add impact to this little finishing blow. You're kinda screwed now, you're all alone. This is where I get to have my fun. I suggest moving, or reacting in some way. Well, too late. You tried, I guess. Let's maybe make that last bit I seem to consistently get like, the same thousand experience for every mission. I suggest moving, or reacting in some way. Well, too late. You tried. I suggest moving, or react- Just wanted the last punch to be a little bit louder, so I just added that for funsies. But that's- that's one clean little fighting encounter just dealt with at this point. There we go. At that point, you go back to the usual pattern of there's obviously dialogue here. You can you, you guys are probably starting to pick out what dialogue looks like at this point. So here's combat. Just a bunch of random punches. It looks it does admittedly look kind of similar. A big clue here is the fact that I'm talking the entire time. That that combined with the waveform makes it look like it's obviously not commentary, although some of it is dialogue. The, Batman's extra confusing to edit, so it's good that I you can see my commentary track under the dialogue to know that that's not a conversation because I, I don't talk over the conversations. But whenever you see this spot where it's like, oh, I'm not talking, and there's these spiky waveforms everywhere, that must be conversations happening. You know about this cheap Joker knockoff you've got at the movie studios. Oh, Joker, shut up. He's so talkative in this game. I'm oh, shit. I can use the remote. That's one of those fun moments where I have to decide exactly what I want to do with the audio. And I'll probably mix it here. So I'm going to take this all to max volume. Put this in the middle. I want it a little quieter so I can hear myself. You can hear that little reaction I have, cause, which you might not hear when it's maxed out. But I don't, I, don't, I don't want it to go all the way down to minus 8 again because that's such a... Like, listen to this. It's such a massive uh, change in audio to go back and forth that rapidly. Drone sensors are temporarily disabled. I can... It just sounds a little too janky, so if I level it more... Some of those guys... The drone sensors are temporarily oh, shit. disabled. I can... Turning it down just a little bit makes it enough that you can hear me react without making the game audio sound really messed up. Probably want that to be a little louder. So we'll, keep, we'll start the envelope here. Skip through the end of the dialogue. Well... We've lost the second radar! Yeah, you sure do. Okay. Basic patterns start to set in here. Find the dialogue to edit. In this case, I'll mute each part. I'll, I'll keep my little reaction in there for a little bit of color, I guess. <laughs> it's weird to describe your own commentary of like, what do I do with this commentary? How do I describe the fact that I'm talking in this moment? 
And you kind of selectively choose which dialogue to increase. A lot of it's just background gangster stuff. All the different criminals everywhere. Not always super important. It's a tiny. It's kind of a tiny target to get. Yeah, I don't necessarily need to increase a lot of this banter here. This one's on its own though. How did I just say? I just disabled his gun, even though there's a window in the way. I'm impressed. Small. It's a fun little line to have while I'm shooting him. Why not? But we can mostly skip ahead to when I'm done with this, which I think I pretty much take out this entire encounter in one go. Yep. Everything goes clean there. So this is on. This is actually a, a little bit more editing than it often takes. Oh, I know what's happening here. All right, so here's another part where I had a lot of trouble, but we can also make it a clean transition. We transition into Batmobile mode, and we have a big bat encounter that was really I failed a few times, just having some trouble with the basics. But we can. Skip to the beginning here. So here's when I first get in my Batmobile, in my final attempt on this part. And I'll sometimes show failures. If you guys, if you've been watching the series, you've seen me fail at certain objectives from time to time. But there's some times where, in this this episode, I was particularly salty and and probably just annoying to listen to when I was failing because I was just getting frustrated. So it's good to add a little transition here. And if you fade it, people might not, it might even not even be noticeable. You almost wouldn't notice that I had just done that if it wasn't for the fact that this, apparently this fucking evacuation sign warps into existence. So that's weird. Oh well. So now that's the, that's the tiny d detail you can notice when you watch this video, the final vision of the version of this video, you'd be like, I see his jump cut. It's a weird moment that there's just an extra sign that was not there a moment ago. I guess it's one of the parts of the game that's just not scripted, which is kind of a neat detail. So let's look at this. It happened so many times. I'll stay in the control room and bring the Batmobile's remote guidance system. Now. Yes, sir. Ooh. What about the Batmobile? Looks like we have five Cobras here. And that's where I start the stealth segment and go shoot up some fools for a while. I'll find a few isolated pieces of dialogue to increase the volume of. Drone was unable to acquire the target. Just so you guys can hear it as it comes up. They like to be talkative and scaring goons is part of the Batman experience. So having a few reactions like, "How are they taking down all the drones? Oh my goodness!" Oh shit! Enemy spotted. Perdition bridge. Can I even do anything about this, or do I just lose? And watching a few of my fuck-ups maybe is fun. There's definitely moments that are I think are improved by being able to hear the game better. There's a little sound here I want to get rid of. Yeah, it's not. It's me starting to say something, but then deciding not to say something. We can just get rid of that. It'll lead to an overall improved experience, I believe. Going that way. I think five tanks was enough. Go behind him. Let's fix that. That was kind of not quite good. He's going Sir, that way. Think five tanks was enough. Go behind him. He's going Sir, that way. Think five tanks was enough. There we go. Just try to improve it a little bit because we couldn't hear him say sir. So it kind of said, it kind of sounded like he just came in and said, don't think five tanks was enough, which concept is there, but the, the voice inflections imply there was more sentence. So. Offline, sending a cobra to support. Now we should be in the clear. Go. Offline, sending a cobra to support. Go. Offline, sending a cobra to support. There we go. Just minor details as we move forward. And I believe those are my main failures that happened here. I think I had one annoying moment where I was trying to... Yeah, here it is. Is that the thing I'm shooting? I can't see it from here. There's a giant icon in my way. So I get confused here. Or three. Oh, there. So let's go ahead and skip ahead because I, I literally walk in circles for a little while. Like, wh what am I trying to anchor to? I even have this off awkward moment. Power winch. There we go. Probably not what I was going for. I was probably going for making it deeper, right? Yep, I I made the uh, the ramp go in the opposite direction I was trying to make it go in. And I just fiddle around here for a while until finally I'm like, oh, on this other side, there's another winch. And that's how you progress. So there's 90 seconds of me wandering around and not accomplishing things that we can just, just we can cut out and that's nice. Wait. 
Oh shit, there it is. Rooftops clear. Targets in the control room. And that's just the kind of nice little moment that makes things a little more acceptable and a smoother experience. My editing style will vary wildly from series to series, because in Dark Souls I like to show the failures because that's part of the experience. In a game like Darkest Dungeon, the failures are like the entire stakes, so I keep like all of them in. But in a game like Batman, a lot of AAA games, the repeated failures are just... The failures themselves are repetitive and kind of uninteresting, which is kind of a bummer. Are you boys coming from a mile away? Those pointy ears aren't just for show, you know. And this is a good example of an episode where I probably recorded too many episodes in a row, and I was kind of getting worn out, and so I just started doing poorly. And so here's yet another example of me failing at one thing over and over again. And it's really... Just this episode as a whole, I think one of the main reasons I'm cutting out my my failures so much in this episode is because it was just such a, a episode that was full of those kinds of things that I think it became problematic. So at some point it's just like, let's let's try to make this a better experience for everyone because no one needs to put up with this version of me that I think has, I think we have, I think we're looking at like a combined total like 40 minutes of cut footage over the course of this video. Howdy y'all. Oh shit. Really? Not even a moment of like loading in the screen before you punch me? <laughs> Dick. Howdy y'all. Oh shit. So let's, where exactly does this start? We probably, oh. I can kind of transition a little better. Maybe a little later. Is he just gonna van it? Howdy y'all. That's closer at least. Cause yeah, that was such a weird jump that it quite didn't quite make enough sense, but this one's closer at least. So I can make this work. Here. Are you? Not yet, Dark Knight. Howdy, y'all. Oh shit. Really? Not even a moment of like loading in the screen before you punch me. <laughs> and then I fight for a while. This is a lot to deal with. That moment where you just. Nope. Thanks for trying, though. All right. Well, now that I'm done with that heart attack. And I don't mind skipping to the successful attempts in this particular game, because the successful attempts are so clean and cool looking when you when you pull them off, because it's like, there was like 30 guys, and look at me perfectly counter all of them. That idea. I believe that part where I stopped talking mysteriously is the end of the episode. Because there's no more commentary. I think I even resync at the end here. Yeah. So, because I thought, I thought I hadn't synced earlier. Ta-da! And now we have a 37-minute episode out of what was originally 110 minutes of footage. Oh yeah, and pro tip. I think it's already done here, but yeah, if you're in Vegas, go to right-click on the video, click Disable Resample. That will save you a heart attack... Uh, not, not a heart attack. It'll save you from one of the biggest, most annoying things that can happen, this kind of thing. So, that was me editing an episode. It took longer because I was narrating and explaining it to you guys a bit, and also... This took more editing than your average episode will take, but it'll give you some idea of what I do. And so what I'll do is I'll sit here and I'll go back and record the re edit the other episodes. Those the, these are the previous two ups, uh, pre oh previous three episodes that I have not edited yet. I skipped to this one because it required more editing because I just wanted to show you guys the whole process. And a fun little trick you can do in Vegas is you can highlight the area, you can hit R, and type in a number. And now you have an event area. These little green things that are highlighting it and stuff. You can go to Tools, Scripting, Batch Render. And from here you can actually choose your file format. If it'll load it, there we go. You choose like a location and a name and blah blah blah. I My file format is Sony AVC MPC. I have a custom setup here, this 1080p uh, this 1080p file size, you want to do render regions and then hit OK. You do that after you've done this little green thing around each episode you're rendering. You can actually leave your computer to render overnight and it'll render your 10 episodes or whatever. Check them afterwards to make sure things didn't go wrong. I've encountered a bug where, especially with PC recordings, uh, Vegas will just fail to load the video. So you'll get an entire video sometimes that just has black video and no, there's just no video. And so you have to go back and, and try again at rendering it because it just failed. But usually that doesn't happen. You just want to make sure you check so you don't upload a, a video with no footage. I'll go ahead and review for you guys my custom settings I use for 
let's see customize template so here's my settings for Sony Vegas re uh, rendering you're welcome to tweak them as you go along I'm not going to pretend to be a master of file types that knows everything about how this works I kind of just found stuff that have, have worked and tweaked it over time so these are all my settings and you could you could switch it to 60 frames per second and stuff like that I don't necessarily emphasize that so much a lot of the games I play don't even necessarily run it at 60 and I often don't record at 60 because I need to upgrade to a computer with a better processor right now I think but those are my basics anyway probably should linger a little longer I think these are all default settings though except for the some of the video settings so that's fine anyway guys thanks for watching this I don't know how you made it through this really boring video about me editing video but if this is what you were looking for Hopefully it helped. This was not the most pre-planned video, as you might have noticed. But uh, I try. I'll see you guys next time.